Morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> I have to get rid of this frog in my throat. Excuse me. <clears throat> Just uh, say another word of prayer here. Father in heaven, uh, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit again, as we requested earlier. Please uh, send him into our hearts and into our minds. May the words that I speak be from you. And may he lead and guide me as I talk. And may he lead and guide every person that is here and that is online. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Wait and be patient. What is patience? Patience is the capacity to tolerate challenges or delays without getting upset. That is patience in a nutshell. And most of us would love to have more patience in our lives. We've all heard the saying, God grant me patience, but hurry up. But it's not always easy to have patience, is it? Patience is a topic of many Bible studies, many counseling sessions, many prayers, because life can push us towards reaction, frustration, and disappointment. We may find ourselves praying for more patience when we've been waiting on the Lord to give us clarity on what direction our lives should go. Praying for a long time for God to change our circumstances that we are in. Praying to him so that we don't lose our temper when uh, our brother or our sister hits us the wrong way and we lose our temper. And when we are growing weary and longing for the second coming of Jesus. No matter what leads us to desire more patience, the Bible offers excellent guidance. So let's look at the Word of God. First of all, where does patience come from? Let's turn to Galatians 5, 3, 22 and to 23. Patience is the fruit of the Spirit. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, he said he would send the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all things that are true and honorable and just. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So where is patience in that text? Long-suffering. In the scriptures, long-suffering is used quite a bit. It's interchangeable with the word patience. Romans 8, 25 to 26 says, But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So when we pray to God, the Holy Spirit takes our prayers up to the Lord. And when we ask for patience, He teaches us patience. But patience doesn't come naturally. And that's why it is a gift of God through his Holy Spirit. But there's something we need to do. We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit as he develops patience within us. We can't just say, oh, give me patience, God, and then just fly off the handle right after that. Patience is a quality that can save us from the regrets that come when we refuse to wait for his directions. And there are consequences to our choices. Some of them are the length of our whole life. Some of them alienate us from other people. So we need to listen to the Holy Spirit as he talks to us to direct us as we are waiting 
to have patience. What causes our patience to get stronger, to grow? James 1, 2 to 4. Patience comes from tribulation. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. Now, when you fall into divers temptation, when you're tempted, is that joyful? If we look at it from a human standpoint, it's not, that's for sure. But knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when we're in tribulation, and we have to have patience with what we're going through, let God finish that work in us. Don't take it into your own hands. And James 12 sa uh, 1 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Romans 5 1 to 5 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherewith we, wherewith we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the Lord God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Romans 12, 12 says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue in instant in prayer. So to be patient in trials does not simply mean to sit and wait until they come to an end. Difficult situations demand a great deal of faith and communication with God that he will bring you through with steadfastness and perseverance. To be patient in trials means to be consistent, to continue to pray and to serve God despite all the difficulties before us. God wants us to run to him, not away from him when we're in trouble and we have situations that are trying our patience. Love is patient. We all know the biblical verses in 2 Corinthians 13, right? Charity suffereth not and is kind. Charity envieth not. Chariot vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked. That would be patience if you're not easily provoked, right? Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. It does not boast, and it is not proud. God is patient with us. He's long-suffering. He wants each of us to have eternal life with him. And he'll do what he can through the power of the Holy Spirit to change us. Patience. We should be patient and gentle with one another, within our families. I know that wasn't uh, me for the longest time, and I'm still learning that. Need to be patient. I, uh, when kids used to get hurt, I, you, I, I would get angry. Not at them for getting hurt, just I would just get angry because they got hurt, right? And it's just. God's taking that out of me. We need to be gentle with our families, with our, with our friends, 
and with those that are our enemies. Ephesians 4, 2 says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. And Colossians 3, 12 to 13 says, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, and if any money have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so you also do. I mentioned a little bit earlier that God is patient. Psalm 103.8 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plentiness in mercy. And 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And 1 Timothy 1, 16 says, How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long-suffering for a pattern to them which would hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Christ wants to put his character into each and every one of us so that we may be witnesses to other people and be drawn, they may be drawn to him. When Moses was talking to God on the mount in Exodus 34, 6, and 7, the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and fourth generation. The choices we make now affect the generations ahead of us. And the choices that were made by our parents and our grandparents affect us. Did Jesus exercise patience on the earth? Oh, my goodness. That was close. Yes, he showed patience all the time. He had patience with his disciples, including the 12, despite their lack of faith and their slowness to recognize and understand his divine mission. He was patient with the multitudes as they pressed about him. With the woman taken in sin, he was patient with. With those who sought his healing power, and with the little children, he showed patience. Finally, he remained patient through the suffering of his mock trials and through his crucifixion. It was Philip in John 14, 8 who so foolishly said, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. And Jesus answered with compassion and patience. Have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. So, we as Seventh-day Adventists are waiting. What are we waiting for? Jesus' return, right? So another aspect of being patient is to wait patiently for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Galatians 5, 5 says, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Isaiah 49, 8 says, Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, and a day of salvation have I helped thee. 
and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth and to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. And James 5, 7 to 8 says, Be patient, therefore, brethren. Unto the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And we can see that nowadays with what everything is happening around the world. Jesus is coming soon. Second Peter 3, 8 and 9 says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. God has a timetable. He's going to cut it short, but he wants us all to be ready. He wants us all to be ready, but we still have to be patient. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us the word, as I said earlier, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Lamentations 3.24 to 26 says, The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto men that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him, and is good to the man that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. In Jeremiah 29, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search with me, for me, with all of your heart. Are we seeking the Lord with all of our heart? Sabbath school was brought up that we're busy. We're so busy all the time. Satan keeps everybody busy. Sean brought up the fact that sometimes we look at the Bible and we just read it real quick and we're off, we're doing our thing. God wants us to study his word, to know what is there for us so that we can gain salvation. Psalm 37, 7 to 8 says, Rest in the Lord, Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who persecuted his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, <coughs> anger, anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise do evil. So don't do evil. Cease from anger and wait patiently for God. Psalm 41 says, 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. Philippians 4, 4 to 6 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And all this patience is going to be rewarded. God has promised it. Hebrews 10, 36 says, For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, after you've done what? The will of God, ye might receive the promise. Ecclesiastes 7, 8 says, The end of a thing is better than the beginning, the patient spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. 1 Thessalonians 1, 3. 
Isaiah 40, 31. Everybody knows that one. It's a scripture song. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. God renews our strength. He wants us, he gives us strength to get through anything. We have to rely on him for it. We have to allow him to work in us to get through our tribulations and troubles. Proverbs 14, 29 says, Whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. In James, God says, If any of you lack wisdom, what? Just ask, and he will liberally give it to you. Proverbs 15, 18 says, a hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger quiets contention. Proverbs 16.32 says, Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a whole city. God's patient with us. He wants us to be patient with our fellow man. He wants us to be patient with our family, our children. He wants us to continue to soldier on, run the race, because he is coming soon and he wants us to be ready. We need to have the character of Christ in our lives. Because in Revelation 14, 12, the people that are going to be in heaven is these ones. Here's the patience of the saints here are they that keep his commandments of God, keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. We need Christ in our life through the Holy Spirit. And we need to listen to his direction. I got a little bit of trivia here. Just a little bit. You guys want to sit here for the whole afternoon? All right. How many people were at the Last Supper? 13, that's right. Some people say 12, but uh, it's, it's 13. What are we saved by? Christ. How? Through faith and through God's grace, right? In Ephesians, what does Paul say we should not let the sun go down on? Wrath, right? <laughs> Our anger. In Philippians, what does Paul say we should think upon? Things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good, virtue, and praise. Finish this phrase. It is appointed to man once to die after that. The judgment, that's right. Here's another one. Finish the phrase. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Oh, that was good. Everybody said that one. Finish this one. After Jesus was baptized, God said, This is my son in whom I... Yeah, now we're cooking here. What New Testament book has Jesus' Sermon on the Mount? Matthew, that's correct. How many times does the Bible mention the word snow? Snow. Is it a joke? It says 24 times. <laughs> uh, 
I guess so, it must be. What is the outcome of honoring your father and mother? You will live long in the right. In Luke, the woman cleans Jesus' feet with what two things? Tears in her hair, yes. In what book is this verse found? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Proverbs. You guys know all these. Well, hang on there a little further back here. One, one tough one. Oh, no, that's not so tough. Okay. How did Uda lose his knife? Ehud, sorry. <laughs> Ehud. Read that backwards. Ehud. Is that a tough one? How did he lose his knife? He stuck it into the king's fat, and the fat consumed it. Men were mauled by bears when they insulted Elijah for what? Being bald. <laughs> okay, last one. How did the Holy Spirit descend onto the apostles during Pentecost? In a flaming fire. That's right. It's just we have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Teach us patience. Help us to be faithful as we wait upon you. Help us to draw others onto you, to you and to Jesus Christ, our Savior. We ask that your Holy Spirit work upon us and upon those people out there that don't know about you and that somehow we may be a witness to them. Thank you for your love, for your long-suffering towards us, sinful human beings that we are, for always drawing us back to you when we fail and when we sin against you. We thank you. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior, who died upon the cross at Calvary for us. And Father, may you have all the glory when Jesus comes. And you will have all the glory for you have given each of us salvation. And for that, we thank you. And we praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Closing song.